people say, what, police in a school, how bad is that? And I was like, well actually, it's how good is that? Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite because it's not, I'm not here to be school discipline. I'm not here to deal with it. School deals with it. Mm -hmm. I'm an add-on. Support. Oh, oh, oh. They're a group that are filming here about the kind of job I do and all that sort of thing. It's because I'll recently won the lottery. Way back in 2015, myself and Eddie undertook the challenge of creating a web series all about the community side of the emergency services. At the time, we couldn't quite work out what to do with the films. But now, almost nine years on, we're looking back and pleased to release these videos, celebrating amazing work in our local community. So Eddie, we're uh, having a wee look back here. This, I believe, is maybe nine years ago or something like that, this footage. Um, do you remember when we came up with this idea? I mean, the, the, the really good news thing was something you and I worked on. And it was, it was good fun at the time. And then we decided to go and do these sort of wee projects. Yeah. And this one here you're talking about was Garnet Academy. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was based in Garnet Academy, I think, around about that time as well, yeah. if I remember right. In fact, that school no longer stands. No? No, it's been demolished and built elsewhere. There's a wee bit of social history here. This was So this was the first in the kind of like Team 999 series kind of concept we came up with. But the idea was basically the emergency services, but the kind of community side. So, you know, it's... Not that anything's really changed, but really didn't know what we were kind of doing at that point so much. But we managed to get in touch with PC James Brown That's right. and Garnick, and uh, thankfully he agreed that we could come along and film a wee bit of a kind of day in the life. And he was a campus cop. That's right, yeah, campus cop. Which I don't think they have nowadays, but um, I know then every school has a campus cop. It'd be interesting to see him. I'm interested to see what we looked like then, yeah, nine or ten years ago. Should we have we look great? Could you press the space bar? Hello, I'm Eddie Gemmell, and I'm on a mission to find out more about the community side of the emergency services. And to that end, we've come to Garnock Academy to speak with PC James Brown to find out more about his role at the school and what it entails. I can imagine the view you're getting, Taylor. Go to early years and primary schools as well, so it is a journey. Uh, these young people here have known me for five, 50 years here, so they've right. known me for five years. Right. So you would have been in primary school the first time I met you, or just coming into first year. So you've known me straight through your secondary education. I'm not here to be school disciplined. I'm not here to deal with it. School deals with it. Mm -hmm. I'm an add-on. Support. I'm not in the business of shouting at people. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you that. They'll not hear me shouting in this school. You know, speak to people when I listen to them. You know, and that, and that makes a big difference. The uniform makes a difference as well because I'm a different person and get a different response. I've got different experience than the you know, staff in education. But my biggest everyday problem is the internet. Whether it be cyberbullying, whether it be you know, inappropriate sexualised behaviour, all that sort of thing, grooming, you know, five-year-olds playing Call of Duty. That's what's happening. I find that out from my classroom talks and realise, well, that's, that's not healthy, that's not right. What can we do about it? So my experience told me that going to parents' nights, I can't speak to parents. Uh, it's difficult to, to engage with parents, so we came up with the idea of getting the primary school kids to make their own internet safety videos. They all get given, you can have Snapchat, you can have Facebook, you have this, you have that. And then when kids went away, they researched it. They found out the rules, what age you need to be, 13 for Facebook, etc. They made their own wee scenarios and, and videos and put them all together. It's about a 20 minute video we've got, and we use that as a kind of lure to get parents in now, which is working slowly but surely. Jim introduced us to Mrs Watson. And he took over our class for a bit so we could get her perspective on Jim's role within the school. He's just an integral part of the school. We, we've just come to rely on him so much. He has um, participation with every year group in the school. So it's not, you might think, oh, it's probably he more deals with fourth, fifth and sixth years. That's not true. Um, he gives input in PSE to every year group across the year. You will take risks and do things for some reason that you don't know what you're doing, but you know it's risky, but you do it anyway. That's what teenagers do, and the internet allows you to do pretty dangerous things if you choose to do that. Because see, when you're in your room online, you feel really, really, really safe, because you're probably in the safest place in your life is in your room with your parents downstairs. But when you're online, 
the world's watching. And if you share something when you're in that safe place, it's not staying in the room, it goes out the room. We had a health and well-being um, parental information evening earlier this year and Jim spoke to the parents, first, second and third year parents, and I would say that his, um, his input had a huge impact. He was the person that people waited behind at the end to speak to and, and just to say, I didn't, I'm going home to check my child's internet, um, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it happened to be, um, check their passwords, check their settings, because he was saying, don't think this is happening somewhere else, this is happening where you are, this is happening, if not with your child, but with a friend of your child. Uh, so that had a, a really big impact. And now that we've seen how Jim works with the students in the classroom, we went over to the canteen to get a look at how Jim establishes his presence for the students to approach him at any time. Oh no, it's just, I mean, this is an everyday occurrence, you know, I'll come in here every day, check in with them, how you doing? I'm available if they want to approach me now, you know, if anybody's got an, an issue and all that sort of thing, can I have a word? Oh, Mr. Dick, Mr. Dick, we're head teacher. How you doing, please? How are you? How are you? The point I used to ask you, yeah. we've been following PC Brown around uh, the school. The feedback has been unbelievable. Yeah, know. it's fantastic. And what we've discovered as well is he's very open. The kids just come up and say, can you help? Yeah, it's just like having another member of staff uh, on side and, and adds a different dimension in terms of the support that we can offer uh, to the pupils in terms of that nurturing environment. Uh, and you find that very often pupils will go to PC Brown, perhaps instead of even you go to a teacher or one of the pastoral supports because of that relationship's been built up. I, I don't think you can put a, you know, no, a price uh, or a measure on the influence that PC Brown has uh, in terms of ethos that we've created at Garner. Uh, not having PC Brown would be a, a huge uh, negative effect in terms of the, the support that we can offer. That's not to say that we wouldn't find you know, an alternative, but I think that the, the influence that PC Brown has, the support that they has across all sections of the school is just really unmeasurable and, and I'm for one very, very grateful for having PC Brown in my school. Well, we've heard a bit from different teachers at Garnock about Jim's role in the school, but now let's find out what difference Jim has noticed between now and when he started at the school. You know, and it's, as for, what, a thousand kids here as well? I can't remember the last time we did even a playground fight. And I think that's, that's amazing to yeah. me, you know, because kids fall out all the time, you know. Uh, I know that I've said that'll probably erupt, but fingers crossed, you know. <laughs> but it really does, it's, because we had that quite a lot, with territorialism. When yeah. I came here as well with Bees and Dorai and all that. It's a strange one in Garnet Valley, isn't Aye. it? You know, uh -huh. They seem to be at the Dorai and yep. don't like Cumberland. When, when I first arrived here, at dinner time they were standing in different parts of the playground, particularly senior pupils, and then they all went, they went in the same class and there was never a crossword. Yeah. And it was just a habit almost. They don't do that now. Yeah. They don't do that now. I don't ring the classes and say, what are you doing? Do you think that's a bit stupid? Sitting in a, the room with guys that you work away with and go and say, because you're from a different town, yeah. you're going to go somewhere else. They seem to agree with me because they don't see me do it now, you know. Now we've had a look at Jim's work at the school, let's pop over to Irvine Police Station, where we can meet some of the students participating in work experience with the police. OK, Jim, can you tell us more about what's happening here? Yep, we've popped into Irvine. Uh, just now, what we have here is a group of kids from various schools in North Ayrshire doing their police work experience, which is a work, uh, a week working with the police. Uh, they go to various uh, departments from the police and get various experiences. Hopefully, this group are interested in joining the police and that's why they applied to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's various processes they had to get through, a questionnaire, they probably got interviewed as well to make it as like work experience mm -hmm. as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. Anybody in here who wants to become a police officer? Good Lord. Everybody. We sat down with Logan, one of the participants, to ask about his experience in the programme. OK, we're just in there, we're talking to yourself in the group and uh, you've achieved an award after your full week's work experience, now what's that? Yes, you get, well, we had to all write down our names who we thought would uh, get the best award and I didn't think I would get it, but I did get it and it was like, because uh, we did the run in that and I got first, like, first place, the best time in the run, so I think that uh, contrib contributed towards it and all. We talked about things you could gain from something like this. I mean, what have you gained so far? Okay, you talked about wanting to get into the police, but... You get lots of experiences. Before I, you, you signed up for this, I didn't know there was all these areas, like you get the mounted branch, the dog branch, uh, you get like, the gun squad, you get everything we've had. 
we get we got to see the the police with the guns. That was a good experience too. It's and you get a different insight to the police when you people hear the police. It's like a bad view, mm -hmm. but it's not like that. Uh, they they are really nice. They help you. So like when you need to help, they're always there. So it's been a good experience. Is there an area you'd like to tackle at this stage? It would probably cyber crime. Why is that? Uh, because we've not actually had a talk for the like the IT department here, but it's just you can see because of Facebook, Twitter, and all that. There's a lot of bullying that goes on. Uh, that would be the main area I think it would be for, like for teenagers for targeted because there's a lot of bullying that goes on. Okay, Jim, thank you very much for inviting us. A film come day along to to come along with yourself and spend the day with you. Is there anything you'd like to say, pass on to the general public? Just if I could say that uh, if you haven't been aware of campus police officers, I hope you are better informed now that we are in schools in North Ayrshire. We're trying to make a difference, helping people, keeping people safe, you know, and we all feel very lucky to have the jobs we've got as well. You know, campus policing is a special role. Uh, you probably got it from my colleagues as well there, that we love what we do, you know, and the longer we keep doing it, the better. I do think we're making a difference to young people. Thank you very much, Jim. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you. Yeah, that was the campus call, wasn't it? Oh, it's good lord, yeah, that was uh, a while ago. A while ago. Actually, it's funny, but obviously those cameras that XF1 were using it, it actually looks really nice and all that kind of stuff. I was that. Well, I think, where were you? I was behind the camera, yeah. <laughs> See, we should get some, get him to print the camera so we could get prosperity <laughs> for, for the future. Well, <clears throat> you'll see me on another one, actually, that's true. Right.